Hello everybody, I'm David Townsend and welcome back to another session from The Net Academy. On this session, during this video, what we're going to go through is what is the OSPF, the Open Shortest Path First LSA or Link State Advertisement Type 3. On the last session, here's the link if you want to watch it, if you haven't watched it already. We went through the differences between the Types 1 and 2. Type 1 being that router LSA. In an OSPF era, you will have all those routers advertising amongst themselves, just in that area, their router LSA. They are advertising to each other who's connected to them. Who are they advertising into, into OSPF for that area? What's the cost from their perspective to get there? What's the network ID? What's the subnet? And they do that for every single interface that they're advertising into OSPF per router. But again, that router LSA, that Type 1 LSA stays in that area. But when you've got a broadcast multi-access network like Ethernet, you have this Type 2 LSA, which is known as the network LSA. And what that is, is when you've got a designated router or DR. And what that DR is basically advertising via that Type 2 LSA to all other routers or DR others or drivers, however you want to pronounce it, is who's connected to this network? Who are the attached routers? What's the network IDs and the subnets uh, that are advertised? by those Type 1 router LSA. So Type 1 LSA is really that building block. It's the foundation building block of that link state database or LSDB. But as I said, this is about the Type 3 LSA, other, other known as the summary LSA. So we're gonna go into why do we need this summary LSA if we've already got Type 1 and Type 2? What does it do? What is it function? And of course, how to configure this on the Juniper Junos operating system. So let's go. And here's the network itself. So as per the last video, we really concentrated on area zero. Here we configured router one, R1, R2, R3 with uh, the interfaces, with participation in area zero, which is the backbone for OSPF. And we really saw the exchanges of those type one and twos throughout the OSPF area, area zero. But we didn't really go into what happens when you have another area like area two and three here connected to area zero? You're going to have that in an OSPF network. And again, area zero is that backbone. It connects all other non-backbone non areas to the wider network. So all other areas have to communicate through area zero to get to another area. But of course, you need the advertisements in the first place. And if you recall back to that, uh, uh, the last video, again, here's the link. I said that the Type 1 and Type 2 LSAs are not advertised outside of that area. So in last week's video, we configured R1, R2, R3, all in Area 0, to participate, to build our adjacencies, to participate in the OSPF routing protocol. And we saw those R1 router LSAs being advertised and received. We went into some analysis of what they look like. But then I also said that those Type 1, Type 2s are not advertised outside of that area. So then how does, uh, how would the router R4 here or even R5 down here in area two and area three respectively, how would they learn of the existence of R1 which is in area zero? Because all those, all those LSAs, those type one, type two LSAs stay within area zero, just like the type one, type two LSAs that are advertised in area two stay within area two and exactly the same for area three. So how would R4 and R5 know of these networks, these subnet masks and the costs to get there on or in area zero? Well, this is where the function of an ABR comes into it. An ABR is an area border router. So what is an ABR? An ABR, by the definition, or as defined by the OSPF routing protocol, is any router that's participating in OSPF that has an interface in the backbone area, area zero, and has a an interface participating in OSPF that is in a non-backbone area. So if you look at R2 and R3 here, they both have working interfaces in area zero. 
But last week we didn't configure these to be active in area two and area three yet. So right now they're just normal standard OSPF routers. That's obviously gonna change in just a minute. But coming back to that type three LSA, what an ABR does is it summarizes, hence the term summary LSA for type three, is it summarizes those type one and type two LSAs into a type three LSA. And it then advertises that LSA type three from one area into another area. And during this video, there are four things that I want to put across to you for you to learn, for you to take away from this video. Okay, so let's go on to the R1, this router here, and let's have a look at its OSPF database. As you can see, I've just been testing connectivity. It's a virtual lab. Of course, it's important to test uh, connectivity, even if it's non-virtual. Non, non but if we do a run, I'm doing a run because that's the equivalent of Cisco's do. I'm in configure mode, so I have to do a run or do uh, show OSPF database. So we want to look at that link state database. So now we can see, and again, we saw this last week. Let me just move this over a little bit. Is that router LSA. The asterisk means it's been advertised by itself. We're looking at R1's database. The advertising router is 1111. 1111 here, this is R1, the asterisk means I'm seeing this in the LSDB and it is for myself. We can see the router LSA from R2, the router LSA from R3. We can also see the two network LSAs, the two type two LSAs for the 10.001 and the 10.005, i.e. the link from R1 to R2 and R1 to R3 respectively, okay? And if we actually do the same command again, but if we go to more detail into router and let's do LSA ID 1.1.1.1 we could see how many links so link count three we've got the uh, loopback zero which we're advertising we've got the 192.168.0.1 that's the that's the loopback interface and then we've got the two uh, networks from R1 to R2 and R1 to R3 so 10.001 10.005 the cost to get there and the subnet mask that's great now if we actually look at more detail into the router LSA that's coming from R2, we haven't configured it to be a an ABR yet, an area border router. How do I know this? How do you know this? Because it doesn't say here, this is an ABR. There's actually a giveaway. And this is where the in-depth uh, discussions come into it. You've got to look at these bits here, zero, X, zero. What that means is that the VEB bits in OSPF, in, that, uh, in those initial hello packets, that are sent to build the adjacency, um, even though it's advertised in the router LSA, they, they advertise what's the capability of that router. Here we're at the, that R2 is advertising, I'm not a, a I'm, I'm not a virtual connection. So a virtual connection is when you have a uh, discontiguous network. So two, maybe two area zeros or um, from a company acquisition and you need to build a virtual tunnel from one area zero to another area zero because from, from two different companies who have merged together and they have to go through a non-backbone area. But virtual links aren't are something I'm going to discuss and shouldn't be used and certainly should be temporary if they ever are used. So that's your V bit and that has the value of four. So if uh, a router here, R1, what was a virtual router in the sense of building a virtual tunnel, it would be 0x4. E is external router. So that's when we're referring to an autonomous system border router or ASBR. That's when you've got a non OSBF protocol. So maybe RIP, RIP V2, ISIS or static routing, whatever it is. And you're advertising those routes into OSBF. So that router that is injecting those routes into OSBF becomes an ASBR. If R1 was an ASBR here, or sorry, R2 was an ASBR, that would be 0x2, okay? So just by that value, you know that it was an ASBR. If it's an ABR, it would be an 0x1. So if this was set here to 0x1, we would know that R2 was in fact an ABR. But as you can see, it's 0x0. It's, it's saying I, I, I'm not building a virtual connection. I'm not advertising non-OSPF routing protocol into OSPF. I'm not an ASPR and additionally, I am not an ABR. That's about to change. So if I actually go on to R2, which is here, 
let me move it over and so this do just for your benefit is do run show protocols it's not do run because I'm in configure mode show configure show protocols OSPF so we can actually see we've only got area zero here and giggy zero zero one is participating in that that's obviously going to change so if we now do set protocols OSPF area two interface giggy 0.0.0.0 you don't have to give the unit uh, the dot zero Junos would automatically do that for you uh, or if it is if that interface is a dot one dot two etc you would need to define that here but Junos would automatically apply a dot zero for you and if we do the same command show protocols OSBF you can now see we have built area two we haven't committed it yet because I just want to make sure that the interface is configured giggy zero and we can see it's got the right IP address of 10 0 0 1 10 0 0 10 0 1 1 apologies lots of numbers so let's do a commit on this now coming back to R1 And now that you can see that the configuration has committed, so if we come back to R1, and I'll just give a little bit of space here, and if we do the same command again, oh, look at that, before it was a 0x0, now it's a 0x1. R2, because it's the advertising router, is advertising that I am an ABR, I have a working interface connected to area 0, and I also have an interface is connected to a non backbone area, i.e. area two. So therefore it's swapped its bits. It's, it's enabled that zero, it's changed it to one. It is now zero X one, it is an ABR. And we can still see the information is really uh, the, the, the same. So we could see the ID, we can see the data, so on and so forth, the, the cost here. Now see here the cost of metric of one. Now that is R2 saying to get to the 10001 network it costs me one which is great and R1 is obviously going to see that for itself because it's directly connected to it. But for R4's perspective that would be different different when we come on to that in a, in a later video it'd be probably one plus one because you've got to go from here you've got to go from R4 to R2 then R2 to R4, so 1 plus 1 would be a metric of 2, i.e. its cost. Okay, so here's the first point. Uh, an ABR will summarize the type 1 and type 2 LSAs in one area here and advertise it into another area as a type 3. Okay, so what you can see is that for the R whose router LSA that is advertised and it has become that ABR as I've mentioned but we can't see the 10011 network and the subnet and the cost to get there that's been summarized into a type 3 LSA and received on R1 via R2 of course it being the ABR so if we actually come on to R2 if we do a run show OSPF neighbor then it's only got the one interface let me move this a little bit more and run the same command again it's only got the one neighbor address 10.0.0.1 10.0.0.1 at the giggy 001 interface adjacency is full so all LSAs have been exchanged uh, etc now that's great but we've not built the adjacency to R4 yet so what we need to do now is go on to R4, and there's a reason why I'm building up to this. If I go on to R4, let's do a show protocols OSPF, and there's absolutely nothing there, which is why I expect. Let's just quickly do a show interface giggy, make sure that the address is correct, correct for the giggy 000 interface, and it is. So let's do a set protocols OSPF area to interface giggy zero zero slash zero dot zero and let's commit this and that will obviously then succeed. That will then build the adjacency from R4 
to R2. So if we now do a run show OSPF neighbor, it might not be in the full state just yet. Yes, it is, it's in the full state. And if we come back to R2, which is here, if we run that same command again, obviously this is gonna be the full state, ideally, hopefully, and it is. Uh, but if we now do a run show OSPF database, we can see the router LSA that has been received by R4. Great. Now, if I go back to the R4 LSA, and if I do a set protocols OSPF area two interface, and I'm going to advertise the Gigi001 interface into it, because I want this interface to be seen all the way over here to area zero on R1. And if I commit this now, once it succeeds, we're going to see not much of a difference at the high level for the link state database on R2, but what we will see, run show OSPF database. Yep, LS still looks the same, doesn't it? But we can now see the router LSAs that have been received in area zero. The, the router LSAs and the network and summary LSAs that are being received, etc., in area zero here and area two here. But if I now do a run show OSPF database router detail LSA ID 4444, so that is the router LSA from R4, we can now see the 10011 network which is between r2 to r4 but now we can see the router lsa that contains the interface between r4 and to r6 which is not turned on right now but is that then seen on r1 all the way over here in area zero well let's have a look so let's go back onto r1 here we go here let's get rid of r2 in the background so it doesn't get confusing and let's get rid of this command. And let's do a run show OSPF database. And let's see what we could see. So we could see that there's no R4. There's no router LSA here for R4. Why? Remember, that router LSA, the network LSAs that are advertised in area two are not advertised into area zero. But does it then know of R4's existence? Can it reach the 10.0? dot one dot two interface well let's have a look so if i do a run show osbf database net summary can't say summary in june or summary will just give you a summary of uh the osbf database in this case it's a summary so you've got to say net summary the network summary the type 3 lsa and we want to see the detail for the lsa id 2.2.2.2 so if i now generate that same router LSA command on R1 to look at the router LSA that's been advertised by R2 into area zero. Nothing's really changed here. It's still got the 0x1, so we know it's an ABR. We could see this network, this subnet, this cost, all of that is great. But if we do a run show OSPF database on R1, we can now see these two summary LSAs both being advertised by R2. One for the 10.0.1.0 and one for the 10.0.1.4. So that is the link from R2 to R4, the 10.0.1.0, and the link from R4 to, it's not working, but we're still advertising the interface from R4 to R6, the 10.0.1.4 in uh, summary LSA here, respectively. That's great, and that is the second point, is that the ABR, R2 in this case, it is generating a summary LSA for all the networks which are advertised in that one area. So here, R2, if we were to go onto R2's uh, COI here, and run the run show OSPF database, we can see, yeah, we can see R4, R2. So R2 is learning by the root, via the router LSA, all the interfaces that are advertised and being you know, advertised by itself, hence the asterisks, but all the 
uh, interfaces and the cost to get to it that have been advertised by R4. And it is then summarizing those router LSAs and those network LSAs, the type 1, type 2 respectively, into a type 3 summary LSA. So now R1 sees not one but two type 3 LSAs just for area 2. And that is the second point as I was saying. An ABR will generate a type 3 LSA for every network that it sees in one area and advertise that as a type 3 LSA into another area. So if it sees 100 type 1 LSAs in area X, it will advertise all those 100 type 1 LSAs as 100 type 3 LSAs into another area. It's a summary. It's summarizing it and advertising it all into another area. So if we now do a run show OSPF database net summary. I've done that deliberately here because as you can see that we've got to say net summary. You can't just say summary because then it's just going to give you a summary, a high level overview as such of in this case it would be the OSPF database. But net summary and I want to see the detail you can do extensive. Extensive will give you a little bit more information, but I prefer detail. Uh, and let's do LSA ID 10.0.1.0. And now we can see that type 1 and type 2 LSA, which has been translated as such, has been summarized into that type 3 LSA and advertised into area 0 and seen by R1. So we can now see the summary 10.0.1.0 network that is right here between R2 and R4. Advertised by R2. How long it's been alive for. The checksum. We could see the mask. We could see it's a slash 30. And the cost from R2's perspective to get to this network. So here the metric of 1. Question for yourself though. Because we see this metric of 1, does that mean that the cost of R1 to get to that 10.0.1.0 network is also 1? So I'll, let, I'll leave it for pause for a few seconds and just let you think about that. Uh, whilst you're thinking, let me do a run show OSPF route. And here we'll actually see all those OSPF routes that, yes, have been built into that link state database, but then taken that best route and injecting it into the routing table for this Junos device. And now we can actually see all those OSPF routes. So now I can see the 10.0. Oh, it's here. 10.0.1.0 network slash 30. But here we've got the metric of 2. Not 1 that we saw up here, but the metric of 2. Remember, I said that R2's perspective, from R2's perspective, it costs R2 1 just one to get onto this interface. But we're, R2 is summarizing that router LSA and sending it over to R1 in a summary LSA. And that summary LSA is saying, well, from R2, for me to get there, it is a cost of one. But R1, using its router LSA, knows it costs me one to get to R2. So therefore, we've got a cost of 1 here, we've got another cost of 1 here, 1 plus 1, guess what, you come out with 2. That is why in the routing table you see that metric of 2. That is how OSPF works, is it takes the router LSAs, summarised uh, from one area into another area in that type 3 LSA, and injected into the routing table in a cumulative effect, adding the cost to get to that interface from that router, advertising router's perspective, adding on the cost of that own routers to get to that advertising router and injecting that into the routing table. Okay, so what we've seen here is that from R1's perspective, it can see the 10.1.0 network between R2 and R4. It could see the 10.0.1.4 network between R4 and R6, just, just at the back here. But can it ping it? Let's test it. Run ping, hopefully it can because this is a virtualized environment, it's doing a, a, a 10.0.1.2, so this is the interface, the Gigi 000 interface on R4, let's run the ping, and well, hey, there we go, it is pinging, can it ping the Gigi 001 interface on R4, which has the IP address of 10.0.1.5, let's see, there we go. Because it can see, R1 can see in its OSPF database 
all the information it needs on area zero. It could see all the information it, it needs to see via the summary of all the other networks that are not connected to its same area, in this case, area zero. So if I, just to summarize, if I do that run show OSPF database again, we can see OSPF database area zero. We don't see area two and area three here because area one doesn't know they exist, quite frankly. But it can see those networks, those subnet masks, and the cost to get there via the router LSAs, which have been translated into a summary LSA that have been advertised, in this case, by R2. Okay, now question, another question for yourselves is we could see that R1 has learnt of these networks here. We could ping this interface, we could ping this interface. That's great, superb. But does R4 then know about R1? Can R4 see all the networks which are in area 0? The answer is yes, it can. An ABR will generate an a, a, a Type 3 LSA per direction. So it summarizes all the networks, IDs, the subnets, etc., which are connected in area two, area 2 and translates them into a summary LSA and injects that into area 0. And likewise, this ABR, R2, will take all those router R1 LSAs, that network LSA type 2, summarize that into it, its type 3 LSA, and inject that information into area 2. So if we actually come on to the R4, if I select my mouse, if we come on to R4, and let me move here across, and let me maximize it just a little bit more, and do a run show OSPF database. So this again, this is just a summary. We could see R2's router LSA. We could see our own router LSA. Asterisk, it's coming from R4. We can see the network LSA. We can now see the summary LSA of 192.168.0.1. I know that's coming from R1. Um, but we can see this summary for 10.0.0.0. Where is that? That is the link between R1 and R2. Hmm. As I was saying, the LSAs, the ABR, generates a type 3 LSA per direction. From area 2 to area 0, from area 0 to area 2. So if I do a run show OSPF database detail for the net summary. Don't forget you have to say net summary, not summary. It's different. LSA ID 10.0.0.0. And here we go. We could see the network. We could see the subnet mask and R2's perspective on what it costs from R2 to get to this network, a cost of one. Can we ping? Obviously, we know we can because the ICMP worked, but let's do a run ping 10.0.0.1. That is the Gigi 000 interface on R1. And not that button. And there we go. Great. So this is how the net summary, the summary type 3 LSA really works. So in summary, what we have is a summary of the type 1 and type 2 LSAs are confined into a single area and the API is summarizing that into a type 3 LSA and advertising that per direction. Okay. And it would do that for every single network ID that is contained with a single area. So those are your three big points so far. One, the ABR will generate a summary LSA, a type 3 LSA for all the type 1s and type 2 LSAs that are contained within a single area. Second point is it will do that both in both directions from that, in this case, from area 2 to area 0 and from area 0 to area 2. It will do it both ways. It will summarize those type 1s and type 2s that are in both areas and inject them in, bo in both directions. And of course, you can apply filters, etc. But that's it. That'll be a different, different video. The third point is that it will generate a type three LSA, a summary LSA for every network that is seen in that adjacent area. Okay, so we could see ten dot zero 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 here is between R one and R two, and in a few minutes we'll also see it between R one and uh, R3 as well, okay? Now let's build on to that fourth point. 
So here's the fourth and final point for this video. And it's a question for yourselves. We have here R4, which is advertising in the 10.0.1.4 network, subject mask slash 30 uh, network into OSPF within area two. Now R2 will learn that router LSA because it's part of the same area. It will see the router LSA being advertised by R4 and it will see this network. Uh, it will then summarize, as we know, that router LSA, that network and network LSA into area zero. And don't forget, it will do the same vice versa. Now, the question is, when we look at R5, all the way down here, will it learn, A, will it learn about this network all the way up here? Well, we would hope so. But the main question is, who would it see as the advertising router? So who would R3 see as the advertising router? Would it see R4 as the advertising router? Would it see R1 as the advertising router? Would it see R2 as the advertising router for this network here? And from R5's perspective, again, who would it see as that advertising router? Where, who would it see advertising this 10.0.1.4 slash 30 network? So let's have a look first. First, let's look at R3 and see well, who's advertising this network here between R4 and R6. So let's go on to R3. Let me click my mouse. Let's go on to R3. And I've just been doing a little bit of playing around, which is why the screen has changed. So let's now do a run show OSPF database. Now we can see just from a high level the 10.0.1.4 network but this has been advertised not by R4 but by R2. 2.2.2.2. Why is that? Well R4, sorry R3 simply doesn't know about R4's existence. It's in a completely different foreign area and it's not directly connected to it. It has no idea that this router exists but it knows the network exists via that summary LSA. So if we run the same command let's do detail for the net, sum net summary LSA ID 10.0.1.4 we can see it says nothing about R4. No 4.4.4.4 it's the same information we've seen before. So that there answers that that question I just gave you building on that fourth point is that the ABR injects itself as that advertising router for all the networks that are contained within that area so the 10.0.1.4 network yes it's directly connected to R it's not directly connected to R2 but R2 sees it via the router LSA and it will yes summarize it it will inject it both ways for all network uh, network IDs which are in a foreign area and inject it both ways into an adjacent area. Those are the three those three points again. But it it will advertise itself as that advertising router. It really is. It's saying into area zero here. Hey, look if you want to get to the 10.1.1 sorry 10.0.1.4 network, you've got to come through me. But let's look at it from R5's perspective. And again, let me ask you that question. Who does R5 see as the advertising router? Is it going to see R2 as the advertising router or is it going to see R3? You've pretty much just heard an ABI is going to advertise itself as the advertising router. So have a think about it whilst I bring up R5's CLI. Okay, now OSPF isn't configured on this just yet. So if I do a show protocols OSPF, we can see nothing's configured. So let me just do uh, set protocols OSPF area 3 interface gigi 0, .0, .0 and I'll do it the other way as well gigi 1 and let me just check the interfaces are actually configured as well always a good start and they are uh, IP address is correct so, and let me just do it on the other interface and it is correct as well. And let me commit this. And so once it's done this, it will then build the OSPF adjacency from R5 to R3. 
So if we do a run shell OSPF neighbor, it might be in the full state. Uh, looks like it's not running yet. And let's also go on to R3 and make sure it is configured for OSPF. So let's just do a, I've already done it. So we can only, we can see it's only got area zero working in um, OSPF. There is no area three configured here. So let's just quickly do set protocols OSPF area three in, interface, not in capitals. Interface, giggy, zero dot. 0, dot 0 or slash 0 I should, should say and let's just do a show protocols OSPF to make sure it is correct and it is and let me just check the interface IP address show interface giggy 0 slash 0 slash 0 dot 0 and that is also correct so let's commit to this now and what we should see then is that OSPF adjacency build between R5 and R3 in area three. So let me just run the same command again and we can immediately see it has gone into the full state. Okay, great. Now coming back to that question I asked, R5, it will hopefully see this network here, 10.0.1.4 slash 30. Who's it going to see as that advertising router? Is it going to see R2? Or R3 is the advertising router. So let's do a run shell OSPF database. And now we can see summary 10.0.1.4 slash 30. The advertising router is not R2, it is R3. Why is that? Well, R2 has advertised into area 0 to get to this network with the 10.0.1.4 slash 30. You've got to come through me. R3 sees this summary LSA. It sees that summary LSA from R2. And then it summarizes that type 3 summary LSA into area 3. And so R5 sees that summary LSA as you can see here. And R3 is saying, well, to get to this 10.0.1.4 slash 30 network, You've got to come through me because I know to get to that, I've got to go through, guess what, R2. So that the ABRs almost leave a, a, a trail of breadcrumbs as I think about it. They say, they define, well, to get to this network, come through me. If I want to get to that network, I've got to go through another ABR if it's not connected to that area that I'm actually connected to in the first place. And this is how the OSBF routing protocol learns who's connected to who. So, in summary, what, what have we learned? What have we seen? An ABR will, will summarize all the type 1s and type 2s LSAs in a, an area, area 0 or a non-backbone area, and it will generate a type 3 LSA for each one of those networks. And it will summarize that and advertise it into, again, both directions, from area 2 or area 3 into area 0, and from area 0 into area two and three it goes both directions and again of course you could filter out but then you'll need some kind of firewall policies which is going to be a separate video and the abr will advertise itself as the advertising router so as we saw r2 is advertising itself as the advertising router to r1 and even down to r3 saying well if you want to get to this network up here you've got to come through me but then we saw on r5 to get to that network, you've got to go through R3. R3 was advertising itself as the advertising router. But then it knows, for me to get to that network up here, I've got to go through R3. Okay? So, I hope that you found this uh, video helpful and useful. It was a bit more of a deeper dive into the LSA Type 3. Stay tuned for next week where we'll be going into more detail into that Type 4 and Type 5 LSA. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching and goodbye.